and thanks for joining the Energy Efficiency Education online tutorial presented to you by Ohio Energy Project. This video will walk you through the student guide activities for the secondary curriculum. Your student and family guide includes lab instructions, worksheets, and background information, as well as a pre and post poll for you to complete before and after the energy unit. Important note, we don't expect you to be able to complete all of the activities in the same way you would be able to if you were in the classroom. Some lessons will have to be modified, so do the best that you can and follow the instructions of your teacher. Now, let's walk through the lessons in the secondary curriculum. Lesson 1A, what is energy, a review. Lesson 1 is a review of basic energy concepts and is, and is divided into four mini lessons. Energy forms and sources, measuring energy, energy economics, and energy efficiency and conservation. You will also find another activity in Lesson 1B on page 9 called Human Power. Watch the video on the next slide to complete this activity. Lesson 1B, Human Power. Work and power are important concepts that deal with energy. Work is a force over a given distance, and power is the amount of work done in the amount of time. The goal of this experiment is to get familiar with these concepts. Work and power are important energy concepts and are defined on the previous page. Today we're going to get familiar with those concepts as we go through this activity. Now it's time to go ahead and collect all the materials you'll need for this activity. If you would like, go ahead and pause the video and grab the following. Stopwatch, large bottle filled with water, meter stick, pole or one inch dowel rod, rope or string, your activity sheet and data table on page nine. If you don't have all of the materials in your home, look around to find alternatives or just follow along on page nine. For example, if you don't have a stopwatch, go ahead and use your cell phone or have someone quickly count while demonstrating the activity. Now, let's actually dive into the investigation. This is a great time to get your family involved. Make sure there is no more than three people. With your group, take the mass of the bottle of water in kilograms and record on the chart. First things first, what we're going to do is take our bottle filled with water and place it on our gram scale. The gram is reading 357.1 grams, but first before we write it down in our chart, we have to convert it into kilograms. So what we'll do is divide that by 1,000. So go ahead and take your calculator and divide 357.1 divided by 1,000. And you should get something that says 0.35, but we're going to go ahead and round and we're going to go ahead and say 0.4 kilograms. So let's go ahead and write that. Attach one end of the rope to the bottle and the other end of the rope to the middle of the pole. Next thing I'm going to do is take the water off the gram scale. And I'm going to take my one inch dowel rod where I have it tied to the middle of my pole. And I'm going to take that other end and tie it to my water bottle. Make sure that the bottle is secure and doesn't fall off the rope. Using the meter stick, measure the distance of the rope from the pole to the bottle and record on the chart. Have each person hold the pole horizontally so that the bottle is suspended in air. Twist the pole so that the rope winds around it, lifting the bottle. Now time how fast each person can wind the rope to bring the bottle all the way up to the pole. Record your data in seconds. Next one I'm going to do is measure the distance of the bottle from the dowel rod. So I'm going to take my meter stick and do the measure and it's about one meter. Next it's time for the actual procedure. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I have horizontally holding the dowel rod suspended in air. When it's time for me to go, my niece will say go and I'm going to, she's going to time me and see how fast I can wind the rope around the dowel rod all the way till I get to the very top of the bottle. Now, if you don't have any of the materials at home, just act as if you're on my team and be my data recorder. Okay, do we got it? All right, let's go ahead and try. So when she tells me to go, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Go.
plus so where it says time in your data table, you're going to write down where it says that number one. Okay, let me go ahead with my second try. Go. Six point two five. Six point two five. Okay, and let's do my last try. Go. Seven point four eight. Seven point four eight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and time my partner, my niece Maya. Again, this is a great time to get your family involved. Okay, go. Six point six zero. Six point four one. Go. Six point zero three. Now it's time to fill out the rest of the chart. So we can go ahead and take our experiment and put it to the side and let's go over the rest of the chart. Repeat so that each person has three tries and record each time. Using the given mass of the bottle, calculate the force. Record the force on the worksheet. Use the chart to calculate the average time for each person, their work and their power. So, now that we know the mass of our bottle, we need to now calculate the force, and that's going to be our mass times our acceleration. So, our mass was 0.4, and multiply that by 9.81, and we get 3.9. So, go ahead and write that in the chart where it says force. We have our distance, which is one meter, and then we have our average time. Now, of course, it has space for three people, but since it was only me and my niece today, we're only going to calculate for the, the two people. So next after that is going to be our average time. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up all three of my times in seconds, all three of my times in seconds, and divide that by three to get our average time. So my average time was 5.46 plus 6.25 plus 7.48, which gives me 19.19, and I'm going to have to divide that by 3, and my average time is 6.4. Now let's go ahead and calculate Maya's average time. 6.60 plus 6.41 plus 6.03. And that's 19.04. Let's divide that by 3, and we get 6.3. Now let's go ahead and calculate our work, which is our force times our distance. Well, we already know that our force is 3.9, and our distance is 1 meter. So we're going to do 3.9 times 1, which is 3.9. So go ahead and write that in your, your chart. Next is time, and finally, to calculate our power, which is going to be our work divided by our average time. 3.9 divided by 6.4. It gives me 0.6. Next, we're going to go ahead and do Maya's. It's going to be 3.9 divided by 6.3. And it's going to give us a 0.6. So we basically came out with the same amount of power. 
after you've completed your chart, if you look below, you'll have two questions you have to answer. So let's take a look at those questions. What does it mean if one person has a higher value of power for power? I'm not going to answer that for you. I'll allow you to do some critical thinking. But let's take a look at that second question. How many of you would it take to light a 60 watt bulb? In order for us to do that, we're going to do 60 watts divided by our power. So me and Maya both have a power of 0.6. So if we go ahead and divide 60 divided by 0.6, our power is 100. I'll give you some time to write that information down in your guidebook. Home and community. At the end of each lesson, complete the home and community worksheet. If you have your energy kit at home with an adult, install the kit items to inform, educate, and change the behaviors in your home. If you don't have the energy kit at home, don't worry about installing items. Complete the web quest and review the career section. Note, in lesson one, there are no kit items to install, only questions to answer. This concludes the human power investigation. Thank you for viewing the energy efficiency remote learning tutorial. Please check out additional videos of our secondary curriculum available on our website.